I think every you know every um, every team has a, s a particular strategy. You know, it, it's um, and, it, and it's up to them to believe that that strategy is the right thing for, for each for each game. You know, and obviously, they believe that that is the the way that they need to um, set themselves out to, to beat us on Saturday. Um, just like we'll be we'll be planning the way that we want to beat uh, South Africa. So, listen, it's a talking point. I don't think it changes anything for us, to be honest. Uh, and it's it's something for you guys to have a little bit of discussion over. What will determine it at the end? It will just be hindsight will will allow everyone to 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 say it was the right or the wrong thing to do. And and you know, like I can say it's 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 their strategy, uh, and uh, it's not something that we can control. Jim, so much to talk about their pack. What are the backs doing Um. Well, they have plenty of speed, don't they? They're the outside backs. Um, and if you're loose in any way, they'll punish you. So um, we'll be preparing accordingly. Obviously, we've got serious pace with, with Colby and Arenze on the, on the wings there. Um, so, yeah, they've been going well, and, and uh, we'll have to have our wits about us for sure. Pat, you need Lloyd into kind of changing your formation on the bench at all? Or as you say, you're just going to concentrate on yourself? Yeah, I, you know, we haven't we haven't tinkered with that that split before. Um, you know, there might be you know, there might be times when through injury or, or um, for other reasons. But yeah, I, I'd say um, we'll be fairly conventional, I think, in, in what we do um, on the weekends in terms of the, the split. But yeah, like I say, it's not it's not something that we've taken a huge amount of time uh, looking at. It, it's a talking point, but it's at the end of the day, it's it's um, it's their it's their decision to go with that, and it's their strategy. Ours will be slightly different. Yeah, everyone trained really well today. To be honest, um, probably Jack's the, the only one that, that's slightly behind in terms of being able to to get himself right for this weekend and you know he's done incredibly well as have the, the medics uh, conditioners to get him up to speed and um, probably on, he's actually probably on track from, from where we thought he'd be so you know he's he's done really well and happy with his progress Finlay and, and Dan both trained really well today so uh, you know they're back in the mix. That's cool. I'm just, in your time as Scarlet Tech coach through your time with Joe and under Andy how much time has it ever been spent talking about whether to go to 6-2 uh, for various pictures or various, various times? Um, I can't remember too many times. I, I guess we yeah, partly if you've got a period where you've got a uh, necessity to do that because of injuries and you might have the flexibility in, in certain players that could play two positions in the back line. Uh, Jamison's already told me that he's going to become a bit more flexible next season for Leinster <laughs> you might need to, to, to be able to cover more than one position but yeah it, it, part of it is is the circumstances as a strategy it, it's it's, uh, it's unusual but it's, it's it's certainly been done uh, and it's it's something that I'd say we have talked about it from time to time uh, but it's not something that uh, I don't think we've employed it in, in my time with Ireland and in terms of um, yeah, you guys we're all talking about it it's a big talking point and everyone when their team keeps I guess, yeah, I mean, it, it's a strange one um, coming into this game. We, I think everyone knows that this game was always going to be some the, the, the big game uh, that we had in the first three rounds. Um, you know, we've built up nicely through Romania and Tonga. Uh, you know, we've, we've got some, some ironed out a few things in our attack. Uh, same defensively, we're tested way more against Tonga. So I think we always knew that this was going to be the, the, the pivotal game uh, uh, leading up to, to, to Scotland the week after, so the two weeks after. So, yeah, it's it, we're just going about our business at the moment. Um, I guess you guys are writing or, or press and media and, and supporters in particular are speculating about what, what they might bring. We obviously are really confident uh, and trust in, in what we've been doing, uh, not just recently, but in the last year and a half, two years. And, and this is what we've been building towards. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll see plenty of that on, on Saturday as well. That's it. So there's been a lot of talk about performance over the last few years. And there's been games where Ireland won and players and coaches have not been happy with performance. But given the, the uh, size of this game this weekend, is it just a case of really 
by whether it's necessary or it's important. Is it more simple as well? I think. I think we know that when we play well and, and we play a certain way that, that we're going to be difficult to play against uh, and, and difficult to beat. So you know, we, we'll be looking to implement a lot of the stuff that you've seen over the last couple of years in, in what we do on, on Saturday, as we have tried to do in the Tonga and the Romania games. Um, so, yeah, it, I, th I think we haven't had to win um, uh, ugly, as you call it, maybe uh, too many times. I, I thought what we did in Samoa uh, against Samoa in Bayonne was, I guess, another way of winning a game when the conditions weren't uh, suited to, to playing with, um, with width and too much ball in hand. Uh, we found a way to win through uh, our forward pack dominating in the latter stages of the game. And I think you're going to have to do that at certain times in, in every game. So, yeah, listen, it would it, be great if we could we could throw the ball around and we'd score plenty of tries, but we know that we have to do things um, in the moment and make sure that we're adaptable. And that might mean playing certain ways in, in certain parts of the game. That's Gavin. Yeah, so um, just looking at Southie's game, that would be a huge target for your captain. Um, looking back two years ago when they made the line squad at the same opposition. Just fascinated to hear his journey, his progress, how he reset things at a moment yeah, I guess, I guess that's that that sort of selection uh, was surprising to to probably a lot of us. We felt like Johnny still had and still has plenty to offer, um, but yeah, I don't think he'd be too concerned about that now, Gav. I think he's he's been an unbelievable leader for this group. Um, he's been the talisman. Uh, Certainly uh, in my time um, with the Irish squad uh, as a coach, um, but in the last couple of years, he's, you know, he's, he's been um, unbelievable on the pitch, but also his, the way he goes about his business off the pitch. Um, he's imparted his experience and knowledge and understanding. And um, you know, as much as you'll see the, the sort of competitive and the narky edge of Johnny Sexton on match day, he's an unbelievable person around the group. He, he makes people feel really good about themselves and, he understands how he can influence people and, and the way they feel and the way they play. So, yeah, you know, Jamison plays with him. He, he knows better than anyone how um, how influential he, he can be and still can be. Can I just ask that in terms of what did you, what's it been like during that journey the last two years? Have you thought there might be moments where you thought, well, you know, it's not going to make the World Cup or it's not going to be the first choice? How have you seen what's it like to play with him? What, how have you seen him sort of? Yeah, I suppose it's been awesome to, to witness really, hasn't it? The resilience of the guy and um, like I said, it was a bit of a shock for all of us that he wasn't selected on that Lions tour. He goes into Leinster, has a full preseason, he's flying it for Leinster. So, you know, other guys might have taken it and, you know, it might have knocked their confidence, but he was amazing for Leinster in that preseason and um, he's just kept rolling really. He obviously had the groin injury lately, but like, Aside from that, he comes back to Romania his first game out after about six months and, and has a great game. So um, I suppose it's the measure of the man and uh, a joy to play alongside, I suppose. Thanks. Paul? Uh, Jameson, just a quick question on Stade de France. What's it like to play there? And how excited are you as a group to play in front of what will be a huge charge card on Saturday? Yeah, we're pretty pumped, eh? It's uh, obviously a, a wicked venue. Um, we won't be up against France this time, but. <clears throat> I think we'll be looking to right a few wrongs on the last time we were there. Um, I suppose the performance didn't really go as, as, as we would have liked and, and we've learned a lot from that game and it's really helped us over the last couple of years. So, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it as a squad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Uh, Jameson, you face the New Zealand? So, what we first place in the quarterfinals? January, we've got to get to the quarterfinals, <laughs> so let's not let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're going to make sure that we perform on Saturday, and then we got a huge game a couple of weeks later against Scotland. So, um, yeah, I, I'd be um, I, I'd like to think that we're, we're just making sure that each game we can be be better than the last, and, and that means focusing only on on Saturday's game, whatever you might think. Keen, last question. 
So, I mean, I'm, from your experience as a player, as well as a coach, um, how important is experience in a squad for, for a World Cup like this? Like you've got plenty of guys who've never been at a World Cup, but how important is the likes of Johnny, Pete, Pete? Yeah, I think, it, yeah, it, it does help uh, that they've had the experiences and they can uh, share those um, those experiences and uh, kind of, I guess, understanding of how to to uh, avoid certain things in, in, in this World Cup. Uh, but it's also about, there's no hang-ups for guys as well who haven't been to World Cups and haven't gone and, and done what they thought they could have done at World Cup. So, you know, there's no baggage there for a lot of players as well. So it's a, I guess it's a, it's a combination, a balance of, players that have been fortunate to go to World Cups but maybe haven't done quite as well as they would have liked but also the guys that it's their first World Cup or why not why not be make it a really special one and and, uh, and I think that's that's the kind of balance that, we, that we've had really well in this squad Was it like that for the player as well? What's that? <laughs> in terms of like that, that experience like having experience guys around you when you were playing those? Yeah I think so but uh, yeah I, I think we we all need guys coming through and and uh, you know that that those kind of young youthful players um there's no fear in a lot of them and um, and they and they don't like i can say they don't have the baggage sometimes that some of the older players have now over time as an older more experienced player you understand how to to kind of remove that baggage and, and move on and, and still perform but the younger players they don't have that so i think that's an advantage to have a, a good mix in, in the group